So as the hype slowly elevates and increases for an upcoming OnePlus foldable, likely to be called the OnePlus V Fold and V Flip potentially, as well, we have a little bit of new information to share today. Now, we'd heard some rumors over the past couple of days that OnePlus is foldable, which, by the way, is now confirmed to be coming in the second half of this year of 2023. We'd heard rumors that this device, unlike the Oppo Find N2, which is the device that most of us assume is going to kind of be the blueprint for this device, as Oppo and OnePlus are both owned by BBK Electronics, and their designs do tend to kind of go back and forth a bit like that. Unlike that device, we heard that the OnePlus device was actually going to have a 2K panel for that inside that foldable display, which is higher resolution or perhaps larger than the display found in the Oppo device. Of course, that did kind of throw a monkey wrench into the idea that the Oppo Find N2 would simply be rebadged and called the OnePlus V Fold if that display, that panel, was going to either be, like I said, a higher resolution or simply a larger screen. However, this morning, Max Jambor, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, this is someone who has been a relatively reliable leaker on the internet, just a few short minutes ago tweeted out, this OnePlus foldable device will have a similar form factor to Oppo Find N2. It's not a copy and paste product. So it's a little bit kind of back and forth, right? So the first sentence makes it sound like it is a copy and paste product, but then he specifically says it is not. So what we're probably going to be expecting here is a device that is very, very similar to the Oppo Find N2, but does have some significant differences to it. One of which is probably going to be that higher resolution screen, perhaps a new camera setup. It's really gonna be hard to say any further than that, but we do now at least kind of have an idea of what we should be expecting. Now, we did actually get some quotes from OnePlus's president the other day that makes it sound like this device isn't going to be like a super cheap device either, basically talking about how foldable devices are going to be expensive, necessarily expensive, until they're selling more and more of them so that those prices can come down a bit. I do think it's going to be very important for them to undercut where the Z Fold is, but don't expect $1,000, $1,100. Don't expect something like the Phantom V Fold with this device. Expect something, I would guesstimate, $1,400, something like that is probably the lowest that thing is likely to go. They could still undercut Samsung by quite a bit, but it's still going to be by far their most expensive phone in, in their product line. Now, we've seen some renewed interest in OnePlus with their recent OnePlus 11 devices. People seem to feel like they're kind of returning to form a little bit after losing their way a little bit over the last few years. So the timing really could not be any better, especially given the fact that they've kind of let Oppo do some of the testing of the waters, do some of the early work, and now they can simply take that, tweak it a bit, throw it out in America with a cheaper price than likely any other foldable device that is going to be available in the second half of this year and hopefully profit from that. We do think, I was going to say we know, we don't know anything at this point, but we do think that the Pixel Fold is going to be launching around the same time, the Z Fold 5 around the same time as well. So more than likely, we're going to have Three foldables launching this fall, and OnePlus is set to be maybe the most interesting one simply because of the pricing. If they follow their typical OnePlus pricing structure, hopefully that means that their pricing will be the cheapest of the three. And given that, you know, Google, that's going to be their first device. It's their first release device. There have been many iterations internally that were never released, but Oppo has at least released two, which means that for OnePlus, this is kind of almost like a second, a 2.5 gen device, basically, of course, uh, Samsung, this will be their fifth generation device, so they've got a big head start there. But with OnePlus, you do have, like I said, a 2.5 gen device, potentially at a cheaper price, and I think that that's going to spell good things ahead for this OnePlus device. Guys, I don't have much more I can share about it because there's just not much more out there, but if more stuff does happen, more news does break, you're going to want to be subscribed to this channel for me to bring it to you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.